What's going on, everybody? My name is Stefan Coons, and welcome to the Everyday Pursuit. This is the podcast where we talk about fitness, nutrition, mindset, supplementation, basically anything that you would want to know within your health and fitness journey. So hopefully this episode is valuable. If you haven't and you want to know how to do a bulk, go listen to the episode before this. I talked a little bit about my past and how you're supposed to do a bulk. The reason I'm telling you is because if you look at this episode, how to grow your legs 101, that kind of goes on the whole bulk. Now I'm going to break this down into different sexes just because I think that it is important uh, to kind of talk about like what I see in the industry with, with like what women want to grow with their legs and what men want to grow with their legs, just because that might, you might fall into that category. I don't know. Um, but we're just going to dive right in. Okay. So, um, if you've been on social media anytime in the past two years, you will notice a shift between what's really popular right now for growing is legs and booty for women. Like go look at any girl's fitness page and it's tight yoga pants and a perfect bubble butt. Like that's it. Right. And the reason well, like, you know, you can say, oh, that looks good or that doesn't or whatever. The whole point, okay, of, of why I think that this movement is is kind of good, actually, is because a lot of these women are actually becoming very, like, strong and athletic. And I think the standard before was, like, be small, be skinny, um, you know, be petite. And now these women are like, dude, I'm strong and I'm capable. And in my personal opinion, it's way sexier, like... It, it is much more attractive, I think, and, and empowering I, if I was a female to feel like strong and capable. And I just think it looks better. Like, I think you're going to look better in a dress and leggings and jeans and all that stuff. So that being said, the way that men and women grow their legs is kind of the same. Obviously the genetics are a little bit different. Um, but I think that there's a lot more emphasis on exercises that are targeting the glutes for women more than the men right? Like I think men generally want to have these like fat ginormous tree trunk quads and, and sure they want a nice butt, but like maybe it's not as important. And it just, I mean, you're going to have your personal opinion and your preference, but for me, like I want a good butt to like look good in a pair of jeans and fill them out. Like I know some guys that actually have pretty decent legs. They got like a flat butt and they, they literally have told me, dude, jeans don't stay on me. Like I feel like they're always falling down in the back. Right. And like these are people that have decent quads. So that just goes to show that you can build your quads by doing, you know, front squat stuff and uh, a bunch of like leg extension isolation stuff and get good quads, but not have a, a very good butt. So a lot of women, too, like just to go and because we're still on that category, I see two types of physiques. Well, three types. Okay. Number one, the first type is the best type. It's a girl that has, uh, really good legs, but also a good butt. And I can tell like genetics aside that that person probably sticks to like a lot of big compound movements, deadlifts, squats. Um, I'm sure she does glute bridges and lunges, but she doesn't just do glute bridges. I also see a second physique where a girl has like a round butt and it's popping, but her legs like almost don't match. And even some girls, if they have like, you know, genetically a more of a bubble butt, you can look and say, wow, does that girl have a BBB, like a Brazilian butt lift? Does she have implants? Because it looks weird. Like usually if you have glutes, you also have legs. Like they, it's very hard to, to work one or the other. And then there's a third type, which you don't see very often where a girl has like great legs and no butt. And this is usually genetic. Um, mostly because like, or she played a lot of sports and it's really easy because that the third type, if a girl already has great legs, she doesn't have to build up like her base. She already generally has a pretty good base. All she has to really do is build her butt. And I will tell you that there are exercises that isolate your glutes more than your quads and your hamstrings more than your glutes. Um, and the story is kind of the same for men, right? Like as far as the one, two, and three. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about like for, for me. So I, I spent my first years lifting, not really having great legs. I was an athlete. I was a wrestler and track and football. And I was always like pretty strong decently strong and capable. My lower body actually was always not super great, but I didn't really like look at my legs as like they needed to be big and cut like a bodybuilder. And so I didn't care about them being like super strong. That's not, wasn't a goal of mine. But even when <clears throat> I started first working my legs and they grew and my quads were like pretty beefy, probably actually bigger than they are right now. This is back in 2016. So a while ago, that's probably the largest that they were. 
my glutes and my hamstrings were not very strong. They really weren't. Um, and I didn't know that until I started isolating them. Like, yes, I could do deadlifts and stuff. And I think partially that was like low back and quad. It wasn't as much hamstring as people think. Then I'd get on the like lying hamstring curl. And still to this day, like it's a weak exercise for me, but I'm like, damn, why am I only able to do like 10 reps at 60 pounds and they're dead. And this other person just got off there and crushed it. So my hamstrings were weak, right? So I looked good from the front, but from the side, like I really did have like weaker hamstrings, which also is not good because it can lead to uh, a lot of like knee issues in the, in the future, because your body's going to be very unsymmetrical. Now it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical, but if you have your posterior chain, so all those muscles in the back of you, l- way less strong than your anterior chain, all those muscles in front of you, you're going to have issues. And this is the case for most people, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so then I would get on, so I said hamstrings, right? So then I would get on like a glute bridge. I remember the first time my friends like glute, glute bridge 225. And I'm, I'm watching these girls, and this was years ago, but I'm watching these girls glute bridge 315 for reps. I'm like, oh, I could do it. Dude, I sucked. Like 225, four sets of 10 was hard for me. And mind you, this was at a time where I was probably in the best physical shape, maybe 2017, 18, where I, my VO2 max was good, my cardio was good. And at this time, believe it or not, I could lunge a lot too. And I think I was lunging like 250 walking lunges for like four sets of eight, like really strong. And yes, that's a lot of glute drive, but I realized then that actually my glutes were a little bit weaker. I was, my quads were very strong because I do leg press, leg extension, uh, jumping lunges, sprints, all this, but my glutes, not that they were weak, right? I mean, you have to have powerful glutes to lunge that much, but they weren't as, as strong as I wanted. And, uh, so I, you know, you want the, your body, your lower body, because that's just what we're talking about. You want your lower body to like come together with not having like a weak point. So for example, at that time that I could lunge all that weight, I also could only probably squat like 325 max, which is mind blowing. Part of the reason too, is there were breakdowns I in my form. I'm like, okay, why can I lunge a lot with one leg, but I can't squat a lot. And it wasn't that my legs weren't strong enough. It was like my gro- my groin, um, it, well, I guess it's your legs, but like, it wasn't that my quads, you know, or maybe even glute wasn't strong enough. It was like my groin, my back, my ankle didn't have very good mobility. So mostly my core couldn't hold the weight. Um, and then after like reviewing it and talking to some strength coaches, I kind of realized that like my form was broken down and my lunge form was good because I did a lot of things, things in unilateral. I did a lot of lunge. I'm telling you this because if you're going to grow your lower body, you want to do it the right way. And Previous to what I said, or prior to what I said, uh, when I was talking about, hey, you know, a lot of people have a uh, strong anterior chain and a really weak posterior chain, so all those muscles in the back of you, that's true. And the cool thing about this Instagram movement where everybody wants like nice legs and butt is it inherently makes you gain a stronger posterior chain. And athletes are made from a strong backside, your lower back, your, your upper back, your butt, your hamstrings, like that. Those are your postural muscles. That's why it's called posterior chain. They help you be upright, have better posture, you know, move faster, um, be more explosive. Like that, those are all the muscles that honestly matter a lot more than the anterior chain muscles, in my opinion. So it's kind of hard to isolate one muscle group unless you're doing like kickbacks or booty band stuff, which honestly doesn't really build your glutes. What I've seen, the shift is these women are are doing uh like heavy RDLs, deadlifting, which women deadlifting like six years ago was like CrossFit girls only. Just want to let you know that. Like that's the, what does the vibe that I saw in the gym. Basically no girl was deadlifting unless she was a power lifter or a CrossFitter. Now you see these girls deadlifting all the time and they're doing squ- heavy squats and lunges. Wow. What do you know? All the movements that the dudes were doing and the guys inherently for a long time had like better legs, bigger back. And so I actually love this shift because I think it's making women not only look better, but become like way more strong and capable. And like the cat's out the bag, the secret's out. Uh, before it was like, oh, do a bunch of cardio, do the booty band stuff. And now girls are, are realizing, you know, and when I say girls, like women um, are realizing, hey, I, I can actually have the, like a better physique by lifting just like the guy's that I think have a good physique, right? 
and this is just a generalization, but the girls might be like, Ooh, that guy, he's so muscular and strong and has good abs and he's super fit looking. And then they do something completely opposite of that guy because the women were so afraid to be like bulky or too muscular. And, you know, maybe this is just my opinion. I mean, I'm not I, just, <laughs> this is me as a man. Like I don't necessarily find it super attractive when a girl's like super jacked. That's just me. That's just my opinion. But at the same time, like, I think it's, you know, it's attractive when somebody's fit. Right. Um, and I, I think the shift and I'm, you know, I'm a guy, so I don't maybe know what it's like, but we do train a lot of females at pursuit. And the shift that I've seen is not only the women looking better subjectively, but like they feel more capable. And that's really important because we've done an episode before where coach Riley was on here and we talked about women being confident in the gym. And when you see women go in and they're like deadlifting and squatting and lifting kind of like the dudes, it, I think it's a badass. I, I really respect it. Uh, you know, any other fit person's going to respect it, but that takes a lot of confidence. And before when you're like the only girl doing it and you didn't see on social media, every girl doing it, it's intimidating. And I think that's why a lot of women didn't lift like that. Um, and now though I go to the gym and I'm seeing girls in their twenties, thirties, forties, fifties lifting how I would train them. Like, you know, so I think it's a positive influence. Um, that being said, uh, I think men too, you know, that want to grow their legs, sometimes it's almost the opposite. And this is what I mean by this. Sometimes like women are learning from women right now, all over online, all the online coaching and how to do things. And you can scroll through Instagram on the search and you're going to see butts and nice legs everywhere. So it's like I said, cats out the bag. For guys, you do see like guys with massive quads, but I think kind of the general, like two things that I see are number one, you have to lift really heavy, which is not true. Um, like the guys with big legs always flexing their quads, you know, they're leg pressing as much as they can or hitting one rep max deadlifts. Um, or they are probably on some type of drug. I'm not saying they all are. I'm just saying like, that's kind of what I'm seeing and it's unfortunate because I could tell you right now that when I had the best legs, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. I worked my legs and I'm not saying this is the best way. I'm just telling you this is what I did. I worked my legs once a week on Monday and I destroyed them. I spent about two hours in the gym, which is probably too much for the vast majority of you. So I'm not telling you to go do this. And I would hit an insane amount of volume and my legs would be sore Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and sometimes even Saturday. I would blast them. But as I've talked about in previous episodes, the one thing that causes hypertrophy, AKA muscle growth is muscle failure. Now there, there's a thing where you can go too much and it actually like anything past X point isn't beneficial and it can actually be more damaging. Like you're over damaging the muscle. It doesn't, not that you're going to get hurt necessarily, but like anything beyond that is not more beneficial. It's almost like taking creatine, like five grams a day ish is like kind of the max. Um, just because you take 20 grams doesn't mean you're getting more benefit. Now that 15 grams is just wasted, right? And possibly harmful. So it's almost the same thing with you. If you only need to do five sets of 10 on three exercises to get a hundred percent, maximize your growth, why would you do eight sets of 10? That's just extra stress on the joints, extra stress on your CNS. Um, this is not beneficial. That being said, like, this is what I felt like worked for me. And this is when my legs grew the most. Uh, I, now think I have better legs than what I did before, but that was like the first time I ever really like pounded my legs and wanted to grow them in size. And I think this was beneficial for a couple reasons. I didn't lift heavy. I did lift high volume. And I know that like total volume throughout the week is probably the, the biggest factor, but I chose to just get it in one day because I wanted to like really, really beat and break down my muscles and then recover them as much as possible. And there's a lot of other people that I follow like you know, exercise scientists, uh, professional bodybuilders that actually kind of do that like, like one day a week and destroy that muscle group. I think that's more beneficial for people that are more experienced. At that time, I was lifting for about <clears throat> 10 or 11 years. So I had a lot of years under my belt of weight training experience. My legs newer, like not as much, but still I could take a lot of uh, abuse physically um, in my body. So that's why I did something like that. That being said, I, I want to kind of tell you some tangible action steps and break it down of like what I would do. And this is honestly both, both male and female. I just want the guys to know that like, you don't need to lift heavy. 
the time that my legs look the best, I actually, I'm not saying don't lift heavy, but you don't need to do like two rep and one rep and three rep maxes. Okay. It's not necessary. So if you're like, I have a bad back or, you know, I'm really scared to lift heavy cause I'll get hurt, but I want big legs. So you can do that. Right. In fact, when I had my spinal injury, um, re-injured it in January, I could, it was painful to walk. And during that time I grew my quads, how I could do a leg press. My back was completely supported. Just like in this chair, leg extensions, um, hamstring curls, ca- uh, calf raises, abduction, adduction, everything seated, not even really touching my back and my legs grew because I could still get that range of motion, still a, a, a press. And no, I don't think the leg press is as good as a squat, but I would also say for what? If your if your goal is to grow your legs, the leg press is a fantastic exercise. Is it the best for like total core strength and spinal strength? And you know, do you think it's going to get your heart rate up as much as a squat? Absolutely not. But if your if your goal is to break down your quads, you can do that by the leg press alone. So all these people are like, oh, it's not functional. I'm like, well, functionality is like, what's the purpose of the exercise? If the purpose of the exercise is to grow your quads, I want you to know that a squat's actually not very great. A split squat a lunge, that's a lot better. That's going to put a lot more stress on your quad. Uh, you know, hack squats, sissy squats, those things are actually a lot more quad dominant than like a traditional barbell back squat, just FYI. Um, but I want, I just want the guys to know that. So this is for both men and women. This is what I want you to do. If you're focused on hitting your legs and are growing your legs, it needs to be the primary focus in your training. Like number one, it's 50% of your body, Right or more if you want to look at maybe muscle mass, but it's 50% of your body, you know, ish. And your legs really like dictate a a lot, right? We're bipedal humans. We walk around on our legs. So I want you guys to understand that it's okay if you train your lower body more than you do your upper body. I actually do that almost every single week. Um, Yes, it could be a 50-50 split. And look, I have to suffer for it. My arms aren't that big. I'll be straight up with it because... I'm so focused on training like my back and my core and other muscle groups that like aren't as important to me. That might be opposite of a lot of men that do a ton of arms because they want to fill out a shirt, but I don't want to be that. I don't want to take off my shirt and then have like a dad bod underneath and nothing wrong with it. But I, I wanted to be, I'd rather take off my shirt and look like muscular and have a good chest and a good back and abs than have these like big veiny arms and like a flat, you know, front body. That's just me. Um, but anyways, I would work your legs probably at least twice a week. If you are serious about growth, you have two options. You can hit your posterior chain, so glutes, hamstrings, primarily, like low back, and more like the front, like the quads, like so lunges, front squats, things like that, split squats. And you can do moderate volume and, and do both of them on like, let's say a Monday and a Thursday. I would at least have two days of comp- like pretty much all lower body rest in between because you want that muscle to recover, but you also want to break it down. The problem is, well, not problem, but what you can do is you can hit a certain amount of volume throughout the week. So literature and science says it's really about the total volume you do within like, let's just say five day, seven day period. So basically if you did like three sets on Wednesday and three sets on Thursday, or I guess, no, Monday and Thursday, then, oh, that's six sets during the week. And that's what matters. I kind of disagree with that just based on what I've seen. And look, I, I'm not going against science per se, but you also have to take real life experience. And I've trained hundreds of people in my team, like probably thousands of people. I also have a lot of friends that are like into lifting and a lot of them agree on this. I think that stimulus is different than doing six sets one day. I do. Um, part of the reason is like, if your body's pretty adapted and you're going and you're doing three sets, it might not really break down your muscles that much. And yes, hypertrophy is not just muscle breakdown, it's blood flow and all that other stuff, but primarily it's it what causes hypertrophy, muscle growth is reaching failure or very, very close to the point. So yes, you could do three exercises or three sets and, and reach failure um, on those, but like it might not be enough failure. And I... I think that's why people hit plateaus. They're like so concerned about science. They're like, oh, well, I, it says three sets and then I, I did three sets and then I'm doing three sets. I'm doing the six sets. Why am I not growing? And I'm like, you might need to do more, you know? And that's kind of the hard point of like, 
your body doesn't keep making continuous linear progress. And that's what's really hard with bodybuilding and creating a great physique because it's not always an uphill thing. And you also can't just keep doing more sets and more volume and more and more and more and more and more. If that was the truth, after me lifting for almost 17 years, I would have been doing up 150 sets. I can't do that. So you have to manipulate things like time under tension, um, rest intervals, uh, you know, maybe throwing on like using bands, doing more like a conjugate style training, which coach Mike, our, our head in person coach is excellent at like, you're going to have to manipulate the stimulus more than just more volume, more weight and more frequent. Like that's okay, but there's other ways to manipulate it. And honestly, a lot of growing your legs does come from nutrition. Um, if you're trying to stay super lean and grow your legs at the same time, it's probably not going to happen. And I kind of talk about that on the previous episode with the bulk. So what I would do, right? And this is, you know, just a generalization, just go try this. If you're brand new into lifting, you know, the first year, maybe not just because this might be kind of a lot of volume, but I would break up your leg day into like two days, right? I would hit like half 50% posterior chain, 50% anterior chain on like a Monday and a Thursday. That way there's, they're spread apart, right? Um, in between you can do, you know, some upper body stuff. That's what I would do. I would stick between like probably anywhere from like three or four. If you wanted to really grow your legs, maybe four exercises per muscle group. That's a lot. Okay. I'm talking about like, actually let's do three. So let's just say quads. You were doing like split squats, front squats, and, um, uh, like walking lunges or something. And, and that's, you know, I know the split squats are the same as a lunge, but it's a little bit different or you did hack squats, whatever. Actually, let's say split squats, front barbell, front squats, and leg press. Okay. So those are, that's a lot. That's a lot of quad for a lot of people. And let's say for those, you just did, you know, three sets of 12, which is just really general kind of hypertrophy for most people. And then that means also you'd be doing a uh, barbell. Maybe you did like barbell deadlifts, lying hamstring curls, and then like RDLs. That's a lot. Like you're going to be gas after that workout. Those are all huge, big compound movements. And if you're newer into lifting, maybe you don't want to hit all that on one day. Okay. Um, maybe you do just two of those exercises. Like I'm going to do squats, deadlifts, split squats, and then I'll do hamstring curls for auxiliary. So you cut it down. Um, those are just some examples, but I would hit at least two days. If you are, if you feel like you don't have a lot of time in the gym, okay. And you're a more experienced lifter. This is where I would focus on one muscle group. The reason is because like, if you go in there and you're like, I have 45 to 60 minutes in the gym and I just named those eight exercises you're doing in the beginning, right? Four on your anterior chain, four on your posterior chain. You are not getting that done in an hour. No way. Hell no. Like that's, that's a 90 minute workout at least I think, um, with proper rest time and everything. So if you're like, wow, I don't have that much time. It might not benefit you to go only hit like two exercises on each and then come back Thursday and do it. If you're experienced, just because it might not be enough muscle breakdown. Um, there's something called the mTOR pathway, which basically is a pathway that's activated. That's telling your muscle to grow. And they're there generally needs to be a certain amount of stimulus to like activate, activate that pathway effectively. So like I said, in my experience, what I've seen, if you really want your legs to grow, you need to get close to muscle failure and you can do that different ways. Like I could go in and do two sets on something and two sets on another thing Monday and Thursday. But like I said, you, it's a little bit of experimentation. You have to say like, okay, I'm going to do this for one month and this is the split I'm going to be on. And I want to see what happens to my legs. And you might have really good growth. And then you might say, you know what? I want to switch it up. Um, and I actually want to put like just a anterior chain day, like quads, calves, a lot of squats, a lot of lunges, and then a posterior chain, glute bridge, deadlifts, maybe some sumo stuff, RDLs, hamstring curls. And, and you have to just decide like what's going to be better for you based on your experiment. So one thing I want to leave you guys with is this, you are a science experiment. You're your own science experiment. And when it comes to growing your legs, I know there's a lot of information out there like do this, follow this plan, whatever. The best thing you can do is number one, follow somebody that you feel like they know what they're doing. They have some credibility, whether it's through education or they have proven that they can help people get results, right? Um, good reviews, stuff like that. 
then you need to just go implement it. Like stop looking for the perfect program. If you're like within the first three years of lifting, you could probably follow basically anything. And if you follow it consistent, you'll get better results than you are now. Because my guess is if you're in the first few years of lift, lifting, you're probably not consistent. And if you are really consistent, great. Because if you're going to the gym four to five days a week, that means you, your experiments go faster. So you can see what won't work and what will work in a faster time frame. For example, if you're like, I'm going to try this, th- what Stefan just said, Mondays and Thursdays, you know, three exercise each. I'm going to see what it, what happens. Cool. You give yourself six weeks, look at, take progress pictures, do a body scan, look at your muscle, look at your legs, look at your booty, see what happens. Then if you're like, okay, good results. Then the next six weeks you switch it up. Hey, I'm going to do one muscle group on Monday and one muscle group on Thursday. Then six weeks later, that means in 12 weeks, you will now know not only what you prefer to grow your legs, like, but like, what do you feel like works better for you? And you can switch back and forth. You can do different things. But for me, I, and I do go back and forth. I'll just let you know right now. But for me, I realized that I personally feel a lot better just doing one muscle group. And I know for some people, they're like, I'm not doing like a bodybuilder split, a bro split. And you don't have to, but I feel better because I would rather be able to reach failure on a deadlift and really beat up my like back. And I don't want to have to necessarily do that movement again or like stress my back 48 hours later. I want like a lot of recovery. And and that's just a personal preference for me, like having a back injury and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that, that's my gen- general recommendation. So if you guys have specific questions on you know, well, what exercise do I do? What's the sets and the reps? And I know I gave you some examples, but feel free to reach out to me on social media. Like at Pursuit, we are training men and women literally all over the world, tons of different states, tons of different countries, and we're helping them create custom programs. Um, I will say that it, it's not that you need something that's like super, super tailored to you specifically. And, and what I mean by that is like, you could follow a routine, you listening to this, I could follow the same routine, and we could get really good results, both of us. But but this is where it comes into place. I'm going to need to adjust that the volume. So the exercises could say the same. I'm going to need to adjust the volume. You know, so how many sets, how many reps, maybe the rest time to make it more difficult for me. And you might have to lower it to make it less difficult for you. Same program, just adjusting the volume. And then the biggest thing is the schedule. Um, you need to learn how to like prioritize how long you're going to spend in the gym, how many, how many days a week you're going to go, what's the most effective, you know, usage of time. If you're only going three days or if you're going five days, like that is the most important factor because what that does, if you're like, Hey, this works for me, this works for my schedule. It creates you to be consistent. And if you're consistent with literally anything, you're going to have better results. Like inside of fitness, outside of fitness, consistency really is king. And if you want to grow your legs, you have to be consistent. You can't work them one week and be like, Oh, I'm so sore. And then be like, I don't want to do that again and be that sore for three weeks. Nope. You got to go once or twice a week and you just got to get past it and you got to live past it and your body will adapt. And eventually you don't really get that sore anymore, which by the way, doesn't mean that you're not getting a good workout. That's not a great indication. Um, you can have a tons of muscle breakdown and not be extremely sore just by the way. So hopefully this episode was helpful, but like I said, if you need extra help or guidance, like hit me up, you can go to at pursuit underscore HP on Instagram Um, you can hit me up on Facebook. You can go to our website, pursuehp.com, fill out a consultation form. I would love to chat with you. So if you're, if you're really serious about having an aesthetic goal, have a solid plan going into it and you're going to need experience, like some type of experiment and hopefully experience from somebody. So like, don't go in it blind. Don't just go do random stuff. Don't just go follow what one person said online, unless you're actually going to do it and track it and have some data, both qualitative and quantitative to back your, you, you're the experiment, right? So to say, okay, this worked, this didn't work. Um, and make sure it's a credible source. So I appreciate it. Uh, my ask to you, my last thing is that you do share this episode. If you found it helpful that you leave us a review and, um, we we spread by word of mouth, right? I, I literally do these episodes only to help you guys. Like, you know, I was recording an episode at five 30 this morning, not my favorite thing to do that early, but I'm going on vacation, so I had to get them done. Uh, I appreciate it, guys, and hopefully this episode was helpful. We'll talk to you next time.